Welcome to Support Life, a program focusing on current social issues from a life-affirming perspective. I'm Dominic Meese, and this week our guest is Geraldine Lee, a former nurse and now working with the theatre group Friends of Call of Guadalupe. Geraldine, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I understand you were a former nurse. Can you give us some background in, into your nursing days? Yes, I worked as a nurse in a public hospital and I initially started to um, be involved in the, um, I suppose, uh, counselling, you know, in the pregnancy counselling centre in East Melbourne. One of my friend's um, um, father was uh, Dr. Eric Seal, and he uh, was um, like one of the pro-life supporters. And um, yeah, I got involved in pregnancy counselling way back in the 80s. (laughs) Yeah. And, and then after that, I, I suppose I worked in different hospitals and I suppose my experience of pro-life was, you know, doing counselling, helping single mothers. And then I was involved in a home called Bethlehem House, which for single pregnant women, you know, because a lot of women don't feel sometimes supported and their family put pressure on them to abortion and they feel there are no alternatives. So we offered them an alternative by having this house for single pregnant women. And, um, and then while I was there, then I ha- was inspired to um, get involved in theatre. And, um, and also, it, I suppose I had many experiences in the hospital which made me um, want to be pro-life because my, um, I was working with a nurse where, you know, I was a student nurse and she was a trained nurse and then we, uh, we're looking after a patient, and he um, was quite sick, but you know he still could live. Like, but she um, on the early part of the shift, she said, you know, I'm going to put this um, old man, or he called it, you know, poor bugger, as she said mm. in the, her words, out of his misery. And so um, she s- showed me his chart that there was a bit of a, you could give him a higher dose of morphine or a lower dose, and. So um, she asked me to sign, countersign it. And being a student nurse, I, I wasn't too sure what she meant at the time, but I, I felt that there was something s- feeling weird about it. And, and then when I looked w- concerned about signing, she said, don't worry, um, you know, y- when he dies, we will plan it so the morning shift will clean him up. And so I was like shocked. I, I just thought, wow. Anyway, he did die and, and I was very sad and I just thought, wow, was that, was that something like passive euthanasia or active euthanasia? I don't know what it was because I was a student nurse then, but I just felt there was something quite, it felt wrong to me at the time, and, but um, I was a student nurse. And, and well, that would now be quite shocking, isn't it? You know, <laughs> yes. As a student nurse, you would have only just started. Yes. And Moving on from a student nurse, did you come across any other situations similar to that? Um, I could say, okay, when I was a nurse, I also worked as a midwife and, and I was on agency and I was sent to a hospital where, um, ex- well, I thought it was, you know, a recovery room for um, ear, nose and throat and tonsillitis. So I was okay with that because I was, you know, a bit concerned not to go to abortion clinics. But um, I found myself in a recovery room and they asked me to wheel out this patient and I looked at her chart and it put TOP, which means termination of pregnancy. So I was a bit shocked because I'm kind of quite an adamant <laughs> pro-lifer. And, um, and so that was, that was kind of sad because when I looked through the chart of one of the ladies, she had a stillbirth. And, and I said, oh, you know, I just asked her, how come you had an abortion, you know, because you're married. And, and it seems like you want to have children. And then she started saying to me, oh, she didn't really want to have the abortion, but she was so scared she would, that her baby would die because she had a stillbirth. And I spoke to the other nurses and they said that she should have had counseling, you know, mm. before the abortion. And it sort of dawned on me, you know, about the importance of counseling before you have an abortion. And then I, and then I looked after another lady in that recovery room and she had, had an abortion and she was crying and she said I really wanted this baby you know and my husband said that if I didn't keep it I would uh, he would leave me and and the nurses were saying to me oh she should have had counseling and they were they were giving her him her lots of pethidine to calm the pain and they said oh it's not pain it's emotional pain that she was experiencing Mm. 
That's what the nurses were saying to me that I was working with. Yeah. So it's yeah, that's that's really interesting because there is a. It seems to me that in our society there's a very. It seems that abortion is a quick fix and it's a solution to a problem. But from what you're saying, Geraldine, there may be a lack of counselling that, and it isn't really a solution to a problem. These women are going through yes. whatever emotional state post-abortion and they need that counselling and they need that, that help. Um, and that, that lady is a classic example by the sounds of it. So yes, um, it, it's interesting that it, it doesn't always lead to a solution. Yeah, and I can remember when I was working at Bethlehem House when, uh, you know, uh, with the single pregnant girls, you know, there was... S- um, some girls who had friends who were si- in situations where they were going to have an abortion and, and the receptionist, she was telling us, you know, was saying, oh, to the girl, you know, have you thought of having counselling or have you thought of keeping this baby? Because, you know, she was in, uh, you know, she was quite pregnant. I think she was about 28 weeks. And and the woman said, you know, at the reception said, you know, I know someone, if you want to have this baby, who can actually support you and that's when she got in, ch- in touch with Bethlehem House and, and uh, she had the baby and adopted the baby out. Fantastic. Yeah, so that there are, you know, sort of all these um, experiences, I suppose, led me to kind of think that, um, you know, life, that women need to be supported and that life is, you know, a precious thing. Yeah, and um, yeah, so, so I suppose we've, as a... As a nurse, um, I was, you know, got involved with pregnancy counselling, and Fantastic. also with the single mothers, and then I trained as a midwife too. Fantastic! Yeah. Oh, that's great, Geraldine. We might just go to a quick break, Geraldine. You're watching Support Life. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Support Life. I'm Dominic Meese and our guest is Geraldine Lee. Geraldine, you were saying earlier as a nurse that you came across some situations where people may have been considered as commodities rather than really seeing that dignity of life. Can you explain a bit about that? Yes, um, I did some agency work and I was in diff- working in different hospitals and I found that um, there's a lot of pressure on nurses to and, and sometimes medical staff to for this um, concept of economic viability. And often when I was working in some you know, emergency departments, when patients came in, um, especially if they attempted suicide or, or they um, uh, were on machines for too long, um, there was a lot of talk about money. Uh, an example is I was working in casualty and one of the nurses was, as a patient came in who attempted suicide, she said, oh my, she was saying, that, that's costing us like $8,000 of equipment, mm. that's costing this, and, and there's a lot of pressure in that, um, and, and then, you know, intensive care, how many thousands it is, and, and so there was a kind of cost in how much people contribute in life, so, you know, because that person attempted suicide was um, unemployed and a drug addiction person it was almost like the attitude of the nurse some of the nurses was you know not very not a lot of respect and not a lot of uh, dignity you know treatment of dignity to what's that patient compared to a patient who perhaps you know was contributing to society Mm. you know professional or an actor or doctor or someone like that there was kind of comparisons made uh, made and and I just felt You know, um, one thing that really stuck in my mind when I went to a conference on pro-life was a a woman who had a a husband who was in a coma and she said that to me or to the whole group that her husband had a mission in life even though he was in a part part coma position. He was on nasogastric tube, which is tube feeding, and he still needed, you know, to be... Uh, changed and things like this but she said because her husband opened himself to God's love and life he could bring um, God's love to the nurses and he had a purpose and she he, he um, the wife said to me that um, that nurses would want to just sit by her husband's bed because 
they felt peaceful, they felt loved, and sometimes his eyes would just touch nurses and they would just be in tears. So I think, you know, there's a dignity in the body, you know, someone who opens their heart to God, and the wife was suddenly felt that her husband had a mission. And so you, you hear a, a lot about, you know, patients who are in half comatose and all this, and they, nurses forget sometimes, and I remember as a student, as they always said, you know, the nuns used to say, say to me, you know, the last thing to go is the hearing and the dignity of their life is to treat every patient, whether they're comatose or whatever, with lots of love and when you're moving them, just to speak to them in love, you know. And, and I, I, I don't blame nurses and other people for, because we live in a society where they think they can separate the body and the human, <laughs> the spirit and the emotions. They think because the person's a vegetable, then they're not feeling, thinking, you know, and experiencing in a spiritual sense. And that's interesting. It's interesting you say that because to me, there seems to be a direct contradiction there where a nurse or a doctor will be in another room, say, looking after someone and trying their very best to keep that person alive and, and doing everything they can, which is their role. To preserve, to preserve life, yet you're telling us there's, you know, there's situations where you know, someone might be in a coma and they think less of that person or don't think of them as a person. So it's, to me, there's a bit of a contradiction there and it's, and it's sad. And that story of that man who, who was touching nurses even though he was comatized, that's, that's beautiful. It's fantastic. So. Yes. Yeah, I think our society is very much into I want and rather mm. than seeing that when problems occur that you can you can see the gift in it you know whatever situation it, it's mm. hard though mm. yeah. Geraldine tell us a little bit about your well you've moved, moved on from your nursing days and you're into theatre now so if you give us a bit of a background as to what you do now in theatre and, and performing arts yes. yes I'm involved in a couple of theatre groups and one is a community theatre group and one is a theatre that promotes the culture of life and and hope and um, with that theatre group we, we um, put on musicals that um, are pro-life and one of our musicals called Call of Guadalupe, it is about a family who are contemplating abortion and they decide to keep their baby through the intercession of Our Lady of Guadalupe and also through just different things that happen where um, people go through suffering in the different characters and they call out to the community, to God, and in their calling out, then they find a gift in their suffering, which, I mean, is sometimes hard for people to understand because uh, I have a brother and two sisters who are disabled. And, and they, you know, and I suppose, you know, a lot of people who have the disease, um, actually, um, their mothers abort them because now there's a, a test they can do to diagnose spinal muscular atrophy, like when the baby's in uh, utero. And so, you know, when I was a nurse, there was a lot of pressure. If you had that test, you, you know, the staff had this, um, because it was expensive, that test, that you were going to abort if you find out that your baby's disabled. Mm. So, um, yeah, so I suppose that whole suffering thing led me to this pro-life shows and, and also my mother keeping my brother and two sisters who the doctors at the time said you're going to tr go through a lot of suffering. But yes, we had challenges, but, um, but they, they, my brother and two sisters ended up being in Vertica's quite successful in life. I mean, two of them are lawyers, two of them are married, uh, and one's a social worker and Fantastic. she's got a partner. So, and then both of them, uh, couples have children, so it's, you know, they have had a fulfilling life. And even they provide joy. And yes. You know, there's, there's always a misconception, I think, that people with disabilities are going to, you're going to suffer through your life with those people, but they can provide huge joy. And inspiration. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Down syndrome people are a perfect example. They're, they're beautiful people. They're beautiful, beautiful kids, and, and they provide so yes. much joy and inspiration. So. Yes, they are valuable, you know. We might just go to a break, Geraldine. You're watching Support Life. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Support Life. I'm Dominic Meese and our guest is Geraldine Lee. Geraldine, you were saying before the break you were talking about people with disabilities. Do you come across 
people with disabilities in your theatre work? Yes, we actually um, promote the fact that we are inclusive and we have people with disabilities. And one of the theatre groups I'm involved in is Amusabilities, which um, where we really encourage people with disabilities to be involved in. And um, also with our Friends of Cog theatre group, we also promote that. So it's um, wonderful to have people with disabilities and, and we make it possible so we um, have um, facilities that where it's disabled friendly and um, we also, um, me being a nurse, if I can support them in some way to pick them up or, you know, and, and uh, you know, some of them may, may need things like, you know, going to the toilet with disabled, disabled toilets. So we, we do, you know, and that's all about my, I suppose, my aim, you know, is to promote the, that everyone is valuable, you yeah. know, whether they're disabled, whether they're depressed, whether they're elderly, you know, and I think that's um, one of the things that we do in our theatre group is we also put on, um, um, during Christmas, we put on Christmas carols and we spend time with the elderly because I think um, when I was working um, in a hospital at a certain time, um, some of the people who went to the hospital, like they felt that when they're getting old and they did, they always kept saying, I'm a burden to my family. You know, some of them would say, give me a pill, you know. And I think, you know, I think to some extent it's the response with the family to, to make their relatives feel uh, special and precious because we are in a society that tends to glorify youth, you know, because in very commas, I think there is a, from my opinion, I suppose, a bit of a vested interest because um, youth have the most disposable income and if they can glorify youth and if the if the old people are trying to be youth and the children are trying to be youth, they've got a good big market, you know. But uh, that's the stuff I've learned <laughs> in, in different universities I've been to. <laughs> well, it's fantastic that you include everyone and, and you know, Yeah, that everyone's group. valuable. So you've got di disabled people, depressed people, yeah, and we have people. elderly people elderly in people. our in our theatre group too. Fantastic. So we try to also include um, elderly people because sometimes they say, "Oh, you know, the theatre mustn't be for me. I'm too old." I said, "No, no, no. We would would really like to have you actually, and we would like you to be included um, into the theatre." So, and I think the the theatre becomes very rich when you because the enthusiasm, the spirit of the people, and I know when people come and see our shows, they often say they just feel touched by God, touched by love, touched by just the spirit of unity and community. Fantastic. Yes. And in terms of your theatre work, do you have any future prospects or future projects that you're planning? Um, yes, I'm, I'm hoping to bring a house together where, where young um, adults and p other people want to um, serve God and want to serve pro-life and want to be involved in our projects like the musical or the Christmas carols or visiting uh, people with disabilities or visiting uh, young people that are threatened by suicide because I think, you know, people get marginalised, even youth who feel they can't, you know, have the right labels, the right clothes, the right employment. Mm -hmm. So they think, inverted commas, you know, it, as the society says that you have to have this to, I suppose through the media sometimes we get this picture that, you know, that you, you need to have this to be valuable. Like they, you know, they might put a, a big watch and then they have this woman next to the watch, you know, all those sort of yeah. uh, kind of subtle messages that you need to own this big car to be fulfilled, you know, those are the, so I suppose we, we want to, you know, do these um, and these, I suppose, projects. And the other project is we want to run a musical that's coming up soon and we're looking for people who want to act, sing, dance and, and help backstage or we need people, committee members, administrators, um, organisers. We want everyone, everyone has a place in our, our, our theatre group because we're very, you know, promoting the culture of life and hope that everyone is valuable and very precious. Fantastic. So how do people get involved? Um, well, they can um, contact me either through Facebook, Facebook like um, our theatre group's called Friends of um, Call of Guadalupe Theatre Group or our website which is www.coglife.org www.coglife.org so just so that they can you know, know about our auditions and things like that yeah, yeah and, and most important of all is um, we also want to um, yeah, bring that message to 
people um, of all ages that their life is very valuable and um, yeah and I hope that you know pe and especially now with people losing jobs a lot of people that can be quite challenging to for people to feel valuable that mm. so I suppose my message my personal message that no matter whether you have a good job or you got good labels or whether you're you know, university trained or not trained at all you're valuable and I hope that everyone can be treated, you know, with that dignity of life and, you know, and human beings, we make our mistakes, but, you know, we're all loved. <laughs> Fantastic. So do you have any other last minute piece of, pieces of advice to people that work in theatre? Um, well, in theatre, I think um, pe the people in theatre have a unique, because entertainment is very, a very powerful, everyone's on YouTube, mm -hmm. social media and putting, you know, everyone's a journalist <laughs> on fa Facebook. So I suppose is use theatre to, um, you know, to focus on promoting each other and loving each other, not on what our differences are. If we all if were, you know, pushing out to love, like, you know, reaching out to love and, and people won't want to, you know, abort, they won't want to suicide, you know, if they, if they felt you know, there was. It's like it's like um, I've been with people who are dying, and and sometimes that's the most unique experience where mm -hmm. the family are around, the nurses are around, and it's like it's a spiritual experience, just like giving birth, mm. being a midwife. <laughs> fantastic. Well, you got a fantastic message, Geraldine. Geraldine, I wish you all the best in the future. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for this opportunity. And all the best in the future with your theatre work. Thank you. You have been watching Support Life. Join us again next week. Goodbye.